Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how I make full drum patterns in one track on the Digitone. Something like this. Uh, let's start by just starting a new project. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, fill the sound pool with uh, a few kicks, snares, and hi-hats. And uh, yeah, let's just find a kick. This one is okay. Yeah, so let's save this to the sound pool by holding funk and pressing the menu button. And then going to manage sounds and then press left to open this menu so we can go to the view the pool, press yes. And this is the uh, sound pool for the project. And let's just save the drum to number one here. So press right and export to here. And then just press yes twice. It doesn't matter what the name is or what the tags are. Um, so now we have a kick. So when we hold a trig and then turn the level data knob, then we can select the this sound from the sound pool. So we're sound locking the trig to play this sound. And uh, let's save, uh, we're gonna save a couple versions of every sound because uh, we need a version that is ARP, ARP enabled with uh, one thirty second note speed. So uh, let's just turn the BPM down to 90. That's uh, the range I like to work at. And enable ARP, funk and ARP to turn it on. And then funk and uh, synth 1 to open the ARP menu. Then we can set the speed to one thirty second. Set the length to 1, and then it'll sound like this. So press yes. Actually, don't press yes, press no. And then we'll save this sound to the sound pool. So funk and the menu button, manage sounds, press left, view pool, yes. And then let's save it to this slot. So press right, export to here and then just press yes twice. So now we have, uh, if we uh, sound lock this one to the first kick and then sound lock this one to the second kick, we'll be hearing this. Oops. And uh, I like to have uh, a an ARP version of all the sounds so that uh, I don't need to have a very high BPM to get uh, nice drum rolls. And uh, yeah, so let's continue on, find a snare. Oops. Uh, let's use this one. So let's save this, funk and then menu button, and then manage sounds, press left, view pool, save it to this uh, sound slot, export to here, yes, yes. And now we have the snare saved, and then enable ARP, and then go into the ARP menu, set the speed to 1 32nd, length to one and the reason we use length uh, one is because it might change the uh, it, it might cut the envelope uh, short and then it'll sound different depending on the sound you're uh, uh, setting the arp on so just one sixteenth note save uh, get out of the menu and then same process, funk and then the menu button, manage sounds, left, view pool, 
save it to an empty slot, press right and export to here. And finally, let's do it on the hi-hats. And uh, yeah, let's find a nice hi-hat first. Let's use this one. And uh, I forgot to write it down, but uh, I like to have uh, three hi-hats. One, just a normal one, and then one with uh, one sixteenth note arp speed, and one with the one thirty-second note arp speed. And uh, I'll explain uh, a bit, or, or I'll, I'll show you why this is very nice to have when we go in to make the, the drum pattern. So let's just save the sound to the pool. Punk, and then menu button, manage sounds, press left, view pool, and press uh, right, export to here, and then save, do the same for uh, the ARPed versions. So turn on ARP. Yeah, this is a, a case where the note length will affect the sound. So I usually recommend to have it at 1 16th. But if we turn it down on this sound, it'll change the sound because what basically happens is the sound will stop playing before the decay uh, decay part of the amp envelope is finished. So uh, it'll go straight to the release one instead. And uh, yeah, so now we have a one sixteenth ARP. Punk and the menu button, manage sounds, left, view pool, find an empty slot, press right, export to here, and yes until it's done. And again for a 130 second note ARP speed. So let's uh, do the same thing. Funk and menu, manage sounds, press left, view pool. Find an empty slot, press right, export to here. Yes, yes. So now we have uh, a bunch of sounds, and let's save this just in case we lose stuff. And uh, just for clarity's sake, I'll mute these tracks and then just stay on track four and do everything in there. So uh, let's make a simple beat. So I placed a few kicks and snares. And uh, usually I like to, uh, or what I used to do early uh, and still do sometimes, but not as often anymore, is to place uh, uh, hi-hats on the trigs that are fr uh, empty. So. But then I learned that you could save a lot of tricks by just having one ARP or one uh, hat with uh, ARP enabled and make sure that it doesn't play on the same note as the other sounds. And that's one of the things we should remember. All sounds should use different notes. And uh, that's because if they use the same note, they will cut each other off and steal each other's voices. So uh, if the kick is on uh, this note, let's put the hi-hats on a different note. So uh, this one is uh, ARP enabled. Let's set the length to, let's say, 16. And then I can microtime this all the way to the left so that it basically overlaps with the kick. And it sounds like this. And uh, that lets you do a lot of fun stuff, since there are so many free tricks. So we could do stuff like, uh, uh, let's see. 
yeah, we could do stuff like uh, put a kick here and a kick here. And let's make these a bit shorter. And then we can add another kick over here. But this one will be the ARP enabled one. And it'll sound like this. I think it's a bit too long. Let's set it to just one. Actually, let's set the whole thing to just one, but uh, parameter lock this one up to 16. Because what happened now was that the uh, this ARP was interrupting this snare, and they're playing the same note. So we could change the snare note. This one. Yeah, and that's the second thing. Uh, only one ARP speed is active at a time. So when I switch to the uh, 30 second note ARP on the kick, it interrupted the 16th note ARP on the hi-hats. So we're gonna have to uh, restart the hi-hat thing. So let's se select the 16th note hi-hat um, sound parameter lock it all the way to the, or micro time it all the way to the uh, left, and then set the length to four, so that it plays until the end of this, uh, this pattern. And uh, we could do some more stuff. Let's take the snare. And let's make it make a drum roll. So select the second snare sound, which is the ARP enabled one. And let's make it shorter and softer. And then copy it, make it longer and louder. So now we have this. And uh, yeah, another another thing we can do is uh, usually I like to have uh, a very long pattern, 16, uh, 64 steps. But sometimes I find it easier to just keep everything in one pattern or in one page, if possible, because uh, it it's easier to keep track of what's going on when I only have one page to worry about. So. Uh, we can lengthen this by taking the taking a few of the tricks and then making giving them the the uh, condition called I don't know what how to say this but uh, condition two two out of two. So uh, these snares will now play uh, only every second pattern or every second repeat. And let's take. A few kicks as well, and then uh, set them to only play on the second uh, second loop. So, yeah, let's give this a try. Uh, yeah, so a couple of nice tricks is uh, set the track sound uh, to hi hat. Right now, if I, let's just save this first. Right now, the uh, this track is a thirty-second note uh, repeating hi hat. But let's set it to um, let's just set it to the sixteenth note one. So double press the track and then press left to open the uh, pool. Then select the sixteenth note uh, hi hat sound. And uh, in the pattern itself, let's just set the P lock for the hi-hat to track sound. I think it was this one as well, yeah, to track sound. And the reason we want this is because now we can 
tweak the sound itself and it'll affect uh, it'll actually affect everything but the p-locked stuff will continue to be p-locked while the hi-hats will keep these settings so let's take a look so that's pretty handy if you uh if you want to do some light tweaking on the drums and uh, like live tweaking on the drums and the second trick uh, random LFO on amp decay length on hi-hats uh, that's just to add instant variation when you're uh, on your hi-hats so the hi-hats will sound like this right now but if we set the destination of an uh, if we go to the LFO page and then set the destination to um, uh, amp decay time set the shape to random and then go to the second LFO page and set the trig mode to hold then it'll sound like this and we can also uh, just change the length of it to add a bit more variation And now it sounds like this. Another another nice thing by having the uh, the hi hats set or the track sound set to hi hats is that we can it's easier to adjust the volume of just the hi hats like this. Because I find that the hi hats are usually the uh, the loudest uh, loudest sounds or the unintentionally loudest sounds when uh, when I make drums. Mm, yeah, let's see what else. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think that's it. I, uh, if you have any questions, just ask. I, I like uh, explaining stuff in the comments, so uh, just feel free to ask if there's anything. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.